what can and cannot the Indianapolis Colts do in the 2023 NFL season? We're talking ceiling and the floor for this coming season. So, brand new era. Anthony Richardson never had a quarterback like him. You know, we've had some athletic quarterbacks. Andrew Luck was pretty athletic. Uh, Carson Wentz was athletic. We never had a guy that could really run like he can at the size he is and just bomb it down the field like he could. Um, now, yeah, he's only played 13 games in college, 12 in 2022. He's got a lot of learning to do, very inexperienced. But, and, you know, some people are saying he may need to sit a little while. No, there's, the, you know, there's no need. He needs to get right in there. He needs to play. He needs that valuable experience. So, Live new blood, new head coach, brand new quarterback, brand new style. We're not used to this style, and I'm pumped up. I'm excited. He also has great character, great work. I think he's always he always wants to work, always wants to get in there and just get the work done. And you know he loves football, and you could tell, and that spreads throughout the locker room. You know, and especially knowing that you're gonna have him for the next, you know, at the very least three years. You know, if Chris Bowers here that long, he's Chris Bowers gonna give him at least three years, at least. Uh, there's too much talent to just say, nope, that's it. We're done. You have to give it a chance. You have to give it a couple years. It's, it's you know, it's going to take a little while, but we've seen what, you know, teams like the Bills and the Ravens have, you know, received for staying patient and drafting some quarterbacks that weren't expected to be ready right away. You know, Josh Allen, very raw coming out. Wasn't very good the first two years. I think it was the third year is when he really came out and was, and he really wowed everyone. He really became a new player. And Lamar Jackson really developed as a passer over the, you know, you know, over his career. Justin Fields, you know, right now we haven't seen him reach his potential yet, but he is a lethal, lethal run, run threat. But passing game, he's still learning. He's still getting better. He has incredible arm talent. There is a lot to like about Justin Fields, but the Colts went along and they took that same path. They're in the AFC. You can't just say, oh, we're going to go with this guy and hope he's enough. No, you have to shoot for the stars. You don't shoot for the stars in the AFC, you're not going to a place. You have to get through guys like Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, like we mentioned earlier, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow. There are so many. Trevor Lawrence, if he becomes the guy that we're thinking he could become, but Lawrence is a different story. You know, he's been a little different. You know, he's came out, you know, and everyone said generational. People are generational in college, table's great, but. We, that generational tag hasn't stayed with him in the NFL, and he hasn't really lived up to that. You know, he's been a good quarterback. Don't get me wrong. He just hasn't been the generational tag that he was given. Well, he worked for it, earned it, just hasn't lived up to it in the NFL. College, he did. So, ceiling and floor. Now, waste too much more time talking about everything else, but what we're here for, it's what's fun. So, we're going to go through the schedule twice. I'm giving you my floor. And then my ceiling. It's, you're not going to be happy with the ceiling. It's not great. But the floor, you're going to be even more pissed off. Which, it's you know, it's the floor for a reason. You're not going to be happy. And, you know, with the inexperience that this Colts team has, you know, the you know how raw the defensive back room is. There's just not a lot of experience there. Julian Blackman has a lot there. But, and that cross has a year under his belt. You lost Rodney McLeod. I think he went to Cleveland. Uh, Julius Brent's. You know, hasn't you know he's a rookie. He's coming in fresh. Isaiah Rogers is the only guy that is really somewhat proven. Now, even if Isaiah Rogers does prove to be like, damn, he is the guy. You still need another guy on the other side. You can't have Delias Flowers on the other side. It just it just wouldn't work. Yeah, you have Kenny Moore on the inside. That's fine. We're you know we're happy with that. He's inconsistent, but whatever, right? So first game, Jacksonville. I don't think Jacksonville has won in Indianapolis since like 2017. Uh, but the Colts haven't won in week once, like 2013, 2014 against the Raiders, I think it was. So something has to break there. But we're talking floor. So I'm going L right away. Week one, not good. We're going to give the Colts the loss in that situation. We're going to say the you know the Jaguars break their curse in Indy. But you'll see, I guess we'll see if the Colts break their curse in Jacksonville. You know, Indianapolis hasn't treated Jacksonville well. Jacksonville hasn't treated Indianapolis well. We all know that. I either, You know, there's no reason to explain it. You know, we're Colts fans. We know how Jacksonville goes. So, L, week one. Week two, L. I, remember, we're talking floor. You know, I think we lose the Jaguars to come out. This is floor-wise. You lose the Jaguars to come out. You lose the Houston. And you lose the Baltimore. You know, I think Houston is a 50-50 game. Both games. But I think the Jaguars are just a better football team at the moment. And I don't think the Colts are going to come out. You know, they have 
brand new quarterback, all this stuff. Maybe they have the home game going for them, and it would be huge to beat the Jaguars in week one. That'd be an incredible start to this era, even if the rest of the season was crap, because you prove that you changed the narrative in week one, and you beat the team that has notoriously given you problems, whether it's Indianapolis or Jacksonville. So, you know, but I'm taking the L. I'm saying they take the L. Jaguars are just a better team. Uh, Houston, 50-50, but attacking floor, I'd say, um, you know, you know, CJ Stroud, some of the weapons. Their offensive line is better than you think. It's actually much improved. It's not great, but it's better. Their defense, they have some good pieces here and there, but I don't think it's going to be enough for the Colts receivers. I think the Colts receivers are actually solid. They have some experience with their belts and Pittman and Pierce. Pierce shown flashes, haven't, you know, but we want to see that come to fruition. We we want to see that consistently. He, you know, he was pretty consistent last year. He had a, quite a few games where he had, you know, 60-plus receiving yards, 90 receiving yards here and there. Uh, you really liked what he showed in year one. Now we want to see him translate it to year two and just keep it going. Not n- not necessarily every week, but just finding a more consistent and just showing that you're the guy for number two. I'm not saying he's going to be number one. I think Pittman's number one guy, but all around, all these guys are vocal points of this offense from week to week. You don't know who's going to be, who's going to have the hot hand. Pittman, big year for him. Last year, he kind of struggled, so he's going to have to come back and prove that he is number one because he fumbled a few times, dropped a few passes. Uh, that's not a recipe for being a number one wide receiver. You need to be able to, you need, you need to be reliable. You need to be flashy. You don't, ne- you don't necessarily need to be flashy, flashy, but you want to be able to make those big cat big time catches and the big time, you know, games and stuff. And you, and you, usually Pittman is, you know, he pops off in prime time. He's always great in prime time games, big time games, but there's a few times where he has dropped some passes, needs to clean that up and fumbled needs to clean that up as well. Uh, week four, the Rams, I say we won that one, depending on how Matthew Stafford's looking. But even if, you know, Matthew Stafford's coming back and he's his old self, I still think the Colts win because yeah, they have cup, they have a, you know, other than that, do they really have any weapons that are worth taking note of? I'm not sure. Uh, their offensive line, you know, outside of note boom, not really too stoked. I, you know, I'm not really, I don't think their offensive line is really going to hold with this defensive line. Colts defense line is actually very impressive. A lot of depth, uh, a lot of guys that could take a next step. And if one of these other guys besides Grove or Stewart step up, this defensive line is going to be pretty damn good. And Quiddy Pay showed some good promise last year. We just got to see it. You know, we just got to see it again. We have to see him make another step. He was a first-round pick, pick 21. He has to show it. He has to keep improving if he wants, you know, the spot that he um, garners. Great character, great work. I think there's no reason why he can't. You know, he's got to stay healthy as well. I, you know, he's got he's got nicked up here and there, but I think he'll be fine. So, starting 1-4, and four, very inexperienced quarterback, new coach. This is the floor, and this is honestly realistic, in my opinion. Um Titans, you, you know, you have them at home. I say you lose the Jacksonville. You take an L. You know, we, you know, week five with the Titans is Will Levitt's going to be starting. I don't think so. I think Tannehill is the guy for the Titans starting week one. I don't think there's any question about who's starting week one right now. Maybe Will Levis pulls um, pulls something crazy out of his rear end in training camp, and they and, and, and they just can't not start him week one. But I don't see that happening. I think Ryan Tannehill is going to take week one. Unless he gets nicked up or hurt, I don't think we're going to see much time from Levis this season unless Tannehill just completely craps the bed, you know, crap hits the fan, poop hits the fan. It just seems like that's the situation over in Tennessee. And great coach, give him time, don't throw him into fire. Give this Tennessee team a chance, give him a chance to learn the playbook a little bit. Nothing, you know, no, no, nothing bad there, not bad decisions, all solid and, you know, worth doing what they're doing for that reason. Jacksonville and Jacksonville taking the L. Uh, Cleveland's going to be an incredible team this year. I say they take the L in Cleveland. You know, no, in Lucas Oil, I just don't see them beating Cleveland. I think a lot of people are talking about the Chiefs, so, you know, all the teams, you know, the normal teams on top. And, you know, I've been I've been starting to hype up the Jets. I really like Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. They were a quarterback away. They were pretty damn competitive last year with Mike, no, not Mike White, um, What's his name? Zach Wilson. He's gonna learn behind Emmer for a year, but I don't. You know, Zach, you know Zach Wilson just isn't. He's not. He's not the guy. But Cleveland, they're right there as well with the Jets, with um, the Bills, maybe the Dolphins. If you want to throw the Dolphins in that conversation, I don't have a problem with it. Um, Chiefs, Bengals. I think the I think the Browns. Honestly, if there's a team that's 
you know, that people aren't really talking about. If I had to pick a team to win the AFC this year, yeah, they have to go through a tough division. And as, and as long as Watson returns to form, they, you know, they have Nick Chubb, they have some an incredibly deep wide receiver room, nice tight end, nice offensive line, flashy defense. They just traded for Zedaria Smith. They have Garrett on the other side. I think they have Sheldon Rankins as well. Some good corners, Denzel Ward. You have some good safeties, linebackers. You have Walker. I think they have that. Uh, I know they have Walker. They have JOK. There are so many great players, some flashy players on that team. I would not have a problem with you saying that the Browns can make it to the Super Bowl as long as Watson returns to what he has been, you know, to what he was before all that stuff happened. I don't see any reason why the Browns cannot make it to the Super Bowl or at least be, you know, a very dangerous football team in January, late January. Uh, then you have them, was that, at home? At, you know, at, yeah, at home versus New Orleans. Uh, let, let's see what I have. I wrote everything down so I can stay consistent. Uh, so New Orleans, I have them taking the L in the in the floor. Um, Saints are all around okay team. If Derek Carr commits a few turnovers and say Anthony Richardson throws a deep one here and there, and you, and you connect on a few, you you, you know you you, got, you you have a few big run plays with him and JT. I could see if the Colts get a few turnovers. I could see this game going either way. I just think the Saints are a bit better of a team. They're a bit further along. They have a quarterback that's ready. That's been in the league for a while. Very experienced. I think Carr and the Saints are going to pull this one out. Very good wide receiver room. Very deep wide receiver room. Then you got Carolina. I say you beat Carolina. I think that's a 50-50 game. You know, Carolina actually has a good team. You know, it's not horrible. It's not bad. And, you know, with the addition of Bryce Young, I'm excited to see. They have very good tackles. So, but they're, they're you know, their interior isn't as strong. So, that's where Buckner and Stu were coming along. Uh, but, honestly, you know, they have some good players here and there. They have a nice cornerback room. Good safeties. I love Jeremy Chin. Brian Burns, incredible. And then they have a few really nice, you know, weapons for Bryce Young there. Who, who is the running back? Didn't they sign Miles Sanders? I think they have Miles Sanders, right? Um, so, yeah, that's a good signing right there. If I'm wrong, correct me. But, um, honestly, I don't think they beat New Orleans. I was just talking about Carolina. I think they beat, I, I think they beat Carolina in my stealing ammo floor. A little spoiler there for the rest of the video. Uh, New England, I have them taking a loss. I think New England is just a very fundamentally sound team. You know, this is the game in Germany as well. Uh, it's nice to get the bye week after this. It's only, you know, kind of, you know, you, you know, you get your prime time week. You, you know your international game and then and then you have your buy so that's nice that's nice that they did that for the colts that's that's pretty nice to see um but i say i say they take the loss so the patriots have a really nice defense young rookie quarterbacks really struggle against bill belichick it's just the way it goes belichick's been in the game so long he knows how to mix it up he knows how to just screw with them and i think anthony richardson ha i think anthony richardson ha has a rough game here in new england um and then all that translates, you know. I don't think I, you know. I think those cornerbacks are going to struggle a little bit with those concepts that Bill puts together. Um, I know he's a defensive guy, but he still has final say of what happens and comes up with concepts and such. So, and then you have Tampa Bay after the bye week. You have Tampa Bay for the floor. I'm saying that's a loss. Then you tr then you travel to Tennessee for a, for another loss. Since you know Cincinnati a loss. Um, Tampa Bay, I wonder if it's going to be Baker Mayfield or Kyle Trask at the time. Either one. I just think they have a nice defense. They you know, they have some guys in that defensive line and such that it's going to throw Anthony Richardson off. I could see the Tampa Bay game just being the worst game of Anthony Richardson's season. Honestly, I just have that feeling. Then you have, you have Pittsburgh. They haven't beaten Pittsburgh since 2009. <laughs> I just don't think they beat Pittsburgh. I think Pittsburgh's going to be a very good football team this year. The AFC North is going to be incredible. It's re I could see the AFC North being the best division next year. Steelers, I think they're going to make a huge step. You know, even when they have below average talent, they finish with the you know above average. You know, they, they you know they always have above average play. Mike Tomlin is one of the best coaches of all time. Some people may really come at me for that, but I love Mike Tomlin. I think he is an incredible coach. He's not leaving Pittsburgh until he decides he's leaving Pittsburgh, unless he has like five seasons in a row and the team sucks, but that's not happening. Uh, now you have, you know, you, you know, you, you have Kenny Pickett for a second year. You know, I'm not really huge on Kenny Pickett, 
But I think with you know with Pittsburgh, with Mike Tomlin, with new offense coordinator, I think they're going to actually let him do and throw what he wants. You know, because last year they you know they really didn't let him do much. You know, they really made him learn the playbook before they let him lose. And what you know the times they let him lose, he seemed like he played pretty well. Um, I just don't think we beat Pittsburgh. Very good defense. Uh, I think really going to give me. I could see this one being a really rough game for Anthony Richardson. Then you have Atlanta. I'm I'm throwing that down as an L as well. I just think Atlanta. You know they have a really good run game. Yeah. I I don't know. I no. I could see this one being a win even in the floor. Um, Desmond Ritter is going to be the guy. They have some nice weapons. Uh, you, you know you have Pitts, London. Then they drafted a receiver too. I don't remember who, but you know their offense line. I uh, Bijan Robinson's a monster. He's going to have an incredible rookie season. Um, Defense are some holes here and there. Really, Gary Jarrett's the only one on um, on the line that really is worth taking note of. Cornerbacks, you have A.J. Terrell. A.J. Terrell is an incredible talent at cornerback. There's no reason why you shouldn't, you know, say anything about him. You have to respect A.J. Terrell. He is incredible. I think they just traded for Jeff Okuda as well. Give him a second shot. If he turns out to play really well, that's going to be a scary cornerback duo. Um... In general, I think the Falcons are going to be all right. Are they going to be great? Probably not. They're probably going to run the ball extremely well. Probably going to struggle to stop the run. And that's where I can see that, you know, should, should, should I put the Colts down as a win for this one? Um, sure. I'll put them down as a win for the for Atlanta. I, you know, I have them at L, but I think they beat Atlanta. I think they could beat Atlanta. Week 17, you have the Raiders. I'm going to say you take an L to the Raiders. You know, they have some good talents here and there. They have good receivers, good running back, great, you know, pretty, not great offensive line, but good offensive line. They get the job done. You have a veteran signal caller who just finds ways to get things done. He's wit, his former offensive coordinator, or, you know, is where he started his career in New England with Josh McDaniels. Um, do I really think the Colts have a good chance of winning this? Absolutely. You know, they're at home. The Raiders aren't a great team. They're absolutely beatable. I just think that the Raiders and Jimmy G is going to make the extra play in the air. And maybe maybe Anthony Richardson struggles running in this game. I could just see it. You know, you have Matt Crosby, Chandler Jones, Tyree Wilson. Very good defensive line. Uh, I could really just see that being a struggle in general. I think this is a game where Anthony Richardson has his low in rushing. So, I'm going to... Yeah, the linebackers aren't great. So, maybe not. Maybe the low in rushing is versus uh, the New Orleans Saints. Maybe it's the Patriots. It could probably be the Patriots. Um, other than that, maybe, maybe Baltimore. Baltimore has some incredible linebackers. Very good defensive line. Uh, but I say he has one of his worst games in the Raiders. You know, kind of unexpected, but expected. Say they lose that one. Week 18 in, week 18 in Houston. Um, in the floor, I had them... I had them taking the the L here in Houston. Um, wait, is that in Houston? Let me blow that up real quick. No, it's actually at home. But I so I'm still gonna say they take the L. Say the Colts beat them and um, their stadium, and, they, and then they lose in their. You know, say, say 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 the Colts beat the Texans in their stadium, and then the Colts um, say they lose. Or, you know, say they win in the Texan Stadium. Sometimes weird things like that happen. But, yeah, that's really my floor for this team, really. Uh, really, it's only what I have. One, two, three, four, five wins. Uh, it's probably probably lower than that, honestly. You probably drop one versus Tennessee. You know, I even though I have them splitting here, I could see them getting... Um, What's it called? I can see them getting sweeped. I can see them not beating the Jaguars once, losing to Baltimore. Maybe they get swept by Houston. I don't think that'll happen. I, I think this team is talented enough to not get swept by Houston. Jacksonville, Cleveland, you lose to Cleveland. Maybe you beat New Orleans, um, and then maybe you drop one to Carolina there. Maybe you end up beating Tampa Bay. Um, really, the ceiling, in my opinion, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, 8, 9-ish wins. It's just... You know, yeah, this team is talented, right? And you probably expected me to come out here and and probably get you excited and say 10 and 11, maybe more, but I don't see it. I don't see it. Until this Colts team can prove that this talent can translate to the field, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be high on them. I'm not going to get my hopes up. There's no need for it. The last two teams, we said this team was talented, and we deemed this team as a Super Bowl favorite. Yeah, crazy, right? Not doing it this year. 
I'm I'm trying to be honest with myself this year. And being honest being honest with myself is Anthony Richardson probably isn't going to be ready probably not going to be ready majority of the year. He's probably going to struggle most of the year. And, you know, yeah, he's probably going to be a, you know, you know, a home run threat every play, run game with his cannon. And you know, we have some nice weapons. You know, some big questions are is Will Anthony Richardson be ready? He's probably not. Will how long will it take him? Will he ever be the guy? And that's not what we ask this season. This season we we just ask how long is it going to take for him to get ready, to be ready, to be able to be a good quarterback. Yeah, like I said earlier in the video, Cam Newton, quick. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, it took quite some time. Terry Bradshaw, heck, this year's NFL is Chris Ballard said it. He's probably not. He probably never has a career he has in this day and age. Um, Geno Smith, you know, yeah, he bounced all around. It's kind of a weird situation with him, but it took him quite some time. And when he finally did play well, it played pretty damn well. It took him a while to learn the game. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes that's just how the game happens. Um, not every player catches on right away, like Darius Leonard or Quentin Nelson or, you know, you know, or an Andrew Luck. It's just not realistic to think about every player and be like, hey, this player has to perform right away. Hey, he's got to perform now. There's no other... There, you know, there's no excuses. It doesn't matter. No, it, that's not how it works. It takes time for some players to learn the position, to learn the game. Um, professional, and, and, and you, know, you know, the NFL is a completely different ball game from college. You got to realize that. Secondary is really raw. Not a lot of experience other than Isaiah Rogers, linebackers or whatever. Um, I think the linebackers are pretty good. They'll hold their own. So... Yeah, that's really my ceiling and my floor for the Colts this season. I don't see them winning more than eight, nine games. Maybe they win nine games. I could see them maybe winning nine games. That's like the high end just because this team is bound to make mistakes. They're young. Um, you know, you have a brand new head coach. Your quarterback with not a lot of experience is learning an NFL playbook. Doesn't even have the full offseason because he got drafted, right? But um, the character and the work ethic definitely help. And maybe that, maybe he comes along faster than you would think. But I'm I'm trying to be honest with myself and you guys. The Colts probably aren't going to be very good this year. They're probably going to win four or five games, honestly. Um, now, if Anthony Richardson comes out and he looks at least decent and, you know, everything's going right, you you know, you probably win the division. Division's not very good. Yeah, you know, early in this video, I said the Jaguars are a pretty good football team, right? Yeah, they're a good football team, but there's still questions there. They, you know, they still have some questions, and... Their, their receiving room is going to be incredible. You, you know, you have Calvin Ridley coming back. Christian Kirk had a great great year last year. You have, you have a lot of really nice weapons. Um, they have other guys. LaVisca Chanel is not on the team. I think they're on the Pan. I think he's on the Panthers. But um, nonetheless, be honest with yourself. I'm being honest with myself and you guys. I cannot get my hopes up high. I cannot say with confidence that this team is going to be a damn good football team until I see it translate. Now, maybe since they have a leader, maybe the team re-catches a fire. Maybe having Jonathan Taylor in the same backfield with Anthony Richardson helps him straight out the gate. The running game is a top five. Uh, honestly, I, I, you know, I, I could see the running game being top five in the league. Passing game might be the might be bottom five. Be ready for it. Um, yeah, we have good weapons and such, but you know, at the end of the day, it's gonna take him time. Yeah, he's probably gonna have some nice, incredible plays here and there. Just with, but are we going to get consistency? You know, we might have a, an incredible game here. A few games later, you know, you have a great first half. You suck the second half. Maybe the first game of the season, you suck the first half and you look good in the fourth quarter. It's, pro it's probably going to be very sporadic. But if it's consistent, so be it. We'll be a very good football team. You know, we have talent. I'm not saying we don't have talent. We have two great players on each side. We have Quentin Nelson, Darius Leonard, two incredible cornerstones. Tackles, we'll see how they keep doing. You know, like the Browns game, that's going to be a big test for this for this offensive line. Really, the two tackles, Miles Garrett, you know, and Zedarius Smith are really going to challenge Bernard Ryman and Braden Smith. And that's another thing: the offensive line that doesn't great. You know, we still have a question at right guard. If one or two guys get hurt, oh yikes! It's it's probably going to be pretty bad. So. There's a lot of different things you got to factor into it. You know, there's probably going to be some injuries. You're probably going to lose a guy in training camp. It's just, you know, it just happens sometimes. Sometimes it's just how it happens. And you got to be ready for it and you got to expect that. So 
Um, I want you guys to let me know what you think this floor and the ceiling is for this Colts team. Give me your record prediction. Um, this isn't an actual record prediction yet. You know, we really went in depth a few days ago, Saturday night on the live. We were live for two and a half hours. Really talked about the Colts. You know, teams are playing. We tried to go in depth quite a bit, and it was a pretty good stream. But I want you guys to let me know what you think. Uh, I'm getting ready to wrap this up about, you know, 25 minutes to a half hour. Pretty long for a video for me, so... Um, well, you guys let me know what you think. Thank you for tuning in to the JW Sports Talk Show, where every fan is welcome. If you enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe, and the post notification bell on so you don't miss any future videos. This is JW Sports Talk Show, signing off.